Now, you're looking with light, which is a form of electromagnetic radiation. And what we've got here is a piano that is painted with the spectrum of the rainbow in the middle. Now, what this piano is representing is going to give us an analogy between light, electromagnetic radiation, and sound. You see, sound, you can hear a whole range of octaves. But light, the rainbow that our eyes see, is only a single octave in the whole of the electromagnetic spectrum. The red light and the blue light at the opposite end of the octaves, their wavelength is twice a factor of two different. Just like with sound, the wavelength of sound at one end of the octave is half relative to that at the other end of the octave. Similarly with light, the wavelength of red light is twice as big as that as blue light. So this is shorter wavelength. And going in this direction to the ultraviolet, the X-rays and beyond is shorter and shorter wavelengths. And in the other direction, you come to the red, you go into the infrared, such as heat, microwaves and radio waves. So the whole spread of the electromagnetic spectrum is there. Our eyes only see a single octave. Now imagine what it would be like if you could only see that one octave. There's this whole symphony of light that's inaccessible to you. Before 1945, that's the way it was. We could only look out into the universe in this very narrow band, the one that our eyes see. But since then, we can open up the whole lot. Now, to give you a feeling for what this really means, we have played around with this piano so that it will only play this one octave. And I'm going to have a demonstration now for, would you like to come and give us our party piece on the piano? What's your name? Claudia. Claudia. Right, thank you. Claudia is going to play us a piece of music. It'll sound rather strange, not because Claudia's playing it wrong, but because this piano is only going to play that one octave. Let's see what it comes out like. Right, thank you. Let's stop there for a moment. Now, every note was played correctly. I can see it down here. I'm sure it would have sounded wonderful, but it sounded rather odd because you were only picking up that one octave. Let's see what happens now when we open up the whole of the range. Thank you. Sorry, I was getting carried away. <laughs> right, thank you very much for that demonstration. So you see the moral of this story. It is that the moment we opened up the whole of that audio spectrum, we suddenly were confronted with the whole of music. When we were restricted to a single octave, we'd lost all of Beethoven, all of the Beatles, all of your favourite music. Just realise now what it is like if you could only see with that one octave, see with the rainbow, and be completely unaware of everything else. And this is the metaphor here. Since 1945, we've been able to expand out. We're no longer restricted to that single octave. We can look into space right the way across the electromagnetic spectrum. And in doing so, we found marvels and monsters that nobody ever perceived before. Now what we need to do is to have instruments that are going to be able to extend beyond that spectrum for us because our eyes, unaided, are always stuck with that single rainbow. So we're going to go beyond the rainbow and what Bryson is doing for us is to make a rainbow on this sheet of card by putting a prism in front of a very bright light. And as the lights of the theatre dim down, we will see the spectrum appearing. The violet light at the far end, the red light at this end, and the whole rainbow in the middle. 
Now, what I've got here is a thing called a thermopile. This can measure the intensity of the radiation. And I'll start off by holding it over at the blue end. This is a, a rather difficult experiment for a, a theorist like me, but we'll see how well it works. If you watch the dial, probably nothing at all will happen until we get across to here, to the red, and go beyond the red, and out of the region of the red, suddenly the dial is up there. It's receiving radiation in a region where your eyes can't see any. I bring it back into the visible spectrum, and the dial is moving around. So this experimentally is able to pick up the infrared, pick up the heat radiation that your eyes were unable to see. Now that is a rather primitive demonstration. What we can do is make much more sophisticated instruments that can see into the infrared. And some research scientists from Malvern, which also happens to be in Worcestershire, but this is not a sponsored demonstration in this sense, they have produced a very sophisticated infrared camera which will take photographs beyond the visible light. And what we're going to do is to compare the images with the infrared camera with those with the ordinary camera that sees like your eyes do. Now the tradition at the RI has always been to have a candle. For 164 years you have to have a candle, so this year we've got a rather more sophisticated candle. It's called a Bunsen burner. And what we're going to do with this is to take photographs of it using both the regular television cameras and also the infrared camera and compare the two. So on the screen at the moment you're seeing just the infrared camera version. And we need to see both the two together and compare them. Now, first of all, compare the size of the Bunsen burner in both of them. You'll see that you've got both pictures to scale. And then look at the size of the flame. If I was to ask you, what's the size of that flame? You suddenly realize that it's a question that's not that easy to answer. If you had infrared eyes, you would say it's huge. If you had regular eyes that see in the spectrum, as we do ourselves normally, you'd say, oh, it's about that big. Of course, my hands can feel the heat coming out from here. And some of that heat is infrared radiation, which the infrared camera is picking up and showing as light. If I could obscure this with a dark sheet, you'll get an even more dramatic effect. In the visible light, you can't see anything anymore. But the heat is still showing through the black screen. And if I put my hand in the way, you can see this is like the thief in the night. is being detected by the heat of the infrared camera. Just to show you that we haven't been cheating, there it is all along. So this is also giving us an example of what is reality. It depends what you see. What you see depends which part of the electromagnetic spectrum you are looking with. When I ask you how big is that Bunsen burner flame, the answer depends upon whether you're looking in infrared light or in ordinary light. Both are real. All are real. We have extended our vision beyond that single octave. It's like beginning to open up the whole of the Beethoven symphonies. Now, as this infrared camera is such a fun thing to play with, let's involve all of us in here now by dimming the lights and having a look at the audience in infrared radiation. See if you can recognize any of yourselves while doing this. Now, the infrared camera, the, the warm things show up bright. So it doesn't necessarily mean that these people have got dark hair. It's just that it's not as warm as the faces. If there's anybody with glasses around, the glasses would look like sunshades because they uh, don't show off the same heat as the skin that's behind them. So this is showing in infrared that you can detect things in the dark. Beyond the infrared, we've got radio waves. And of course, radio waves you all know about. You can tune your radio dial and pick up things. You're varying right the way across the radio spectrum and picking up different signals as you do so. I think the beauty of that music we don't need. <laughs>